I hope you don't take this the wrong way. But this drunk Miller is trying to make me look bad. <laughs> I, I pray to God that his neck to break. In Chunkington, there's a mill over the bridge by the river. This story is about the Miller, who is cocky and can do many things. He can wrestle, or <laughs> shoot and fix stuff. He had a round face with a pug nose. And he was bald. Aww. He stole wheat and was called Scornful Simpkin. He had a wife and a daughter. He used to steal a little, but now he steals a lot. The son of a bitch. Hello, Miller. How is your wife and daughter? Welcome, you two. What do you two need? We're here to have our wheat ground up. I'll do that, but what will you do while you're waiting? Why, we'll wait here, of course. We'll wait here and make sure that everything is done right. <laughs> well, while they try making sure I don't steal from them, I will steal even more from them. Ha ha ha. <laughs> oh no, our horse is gone. Oh no, where could it have gone? No, where are you? Where are you? And they chased the horse until it was dark outside. And finally they found the horse in a ditch. And they brought it back. Bad horse you, how dare you run from us? You should know better than this. While the two scholars were off chasing the horse, the miller went and stole some of their wheat that he had already finished and hid it. Ha ha ha, losers. So the two scholars, since it was already late at night, were invited over for dinner and to sleep over. And during dinner, the miller drank and drank and drank and drank and drank until he was extremely drunk. He could barely walk as he stumbled around. His wife had to help him into bed. The miller's wife helped her husband to get into bed, and she went to bed with him. And their daughter went to bed shortly afterwards into her bed. And Alan and John went and got into their beds. But while lying in bed, Alan suddenly had an idea. You know, I'm, we've had such a bad day. I think we should get revenge. I think that we should. But he'll kill us if he finds out. So what? Don't be such a sissy. Alan's devious plan was for him and John to go sleep with the miller's wife and daughter while he w slept in a drunken stupor. Oh baby, oh baby, uh. Farrah, Molly, by the way, the meal that my husband stole from you, it's right inside the meal shop, right by the door. Thank you. After Alan left the miller's wife, he began to head over to his friend's bed. But he mistakenly went to the wrong bed to find the miller very angry at him. Miller, in his rage, grabbed Alan by the throat. How dare you, you fake scholars, you horrible pigs! How could you do this? And Alan, in response, punched the miller as hard as he could in the face to make him let go. Ha! And after Alan punched the miller in the face, the blood dripped down, down the front of the miller and onto the floor, all over the floor, just from his nose. And then like two wild animals, they began rolling around on the ground, fighting, getting blood all over each other, rolling around on the ground like animals. And the miller gets pushed on top of his wife, who screams as loud as she can, Ah! Get off of me! Get off! She thinks it's a scholar that has fallen on top of her. And after the miller's wife pushes her husband off of her, Alan and the miller go back to their fighting. And while they're fighting, the wife, the wife runs over to go grab a staff. And with all her might, she swings the staff and hits her husband on his bald head. Ah! I'm dying! I'm dying! I've been hit! 
And while all this commotion is happening, John wakes up. We should get out of here. Yeah! And the two scholars run off. So the two scholars grab the horse and run for it. The moral of the story here is don't be a total butthead to people, and they won't be buttheads back to you.